conflicts and start creating ad hoc narratives that uh, were completely out of control. Um, one of the things that I really believe in for public space is that um, the projects need to be out of my control. Nobody tells you what to do or not. And the shadow is a very intuitive interface. Everybody, you know, every culture has a sophisticated theater or puppetry of the shadow, or we all play with shadows at night. And so, contrary to what I just showed you, the Victorial Elevation Project, here you don't need instructions. I mean, you just start seeing yourself and you start, you know, sort of creating these narratives. The project was on the square for three weeks, and um, we would see very different behaviors over time. Um, we saw a man on a wheelchair um, project himself 70 foot high, crush everybody under his wheels and derive a lot of pleasure from it. Or we saw on the weekends lots of families, lots of kids, a lot of break dancing. Um, Tuesdays was methadone night at the nearby church, so all the drug addicts would come and prance around. Over time, the project would um, sort of get more and more sophisticated as people would bring props and, and start um, doing all kinds of uh, performances. Now, the project had computer vision. That's kind of like a surveillance term for the computer knows where shadows are. It was a very early version. This one that's much better. And the crucial thing was that when a shadow and a portrait were overlapped, the computer would know, and it would create a little sound, like tick, just to let you know that that particular portrait had been revealed. Most importantly, once all of the portraits in a given scene were revealed, automatically the, the computer would black out the images, cue the new ones, and sort of restart the process of becoming other. Because the idea is that the project wasn't about the portraits, it was about becoming the portraits. And once you saw them all, we would shift to, to sh display more. So you see it now, there's uh, going to be these three people, they kind of collaborate, and once all of the portraits are seen, the computer blacks out, and then new portraits are, are brought in. So we're trying to frustrate the, the idea of representation. Um, this kind of project, this shadow plan, is not a site-specific work. In other words, I did it in Rotterdam, and you know it's departing from this technique or this sort of uh, idea of uh, of shadow play and perspective. But it's been performed, you know, I don't know, in like 18 countries. And for each country that you do this project, they people behave completely differently. So, for example, when we showed this in Portugal, and my stereotype of Latinos is that we are very much close to each other and we like to touch and so on, but in Portugal they were all like, no, that's your shadow over there, I'm not going to touch you and so on. <laughs> Whereas my stereotype of British people, I've never worked in England, and we put this in Liverpool's Williamson Square, I don't know if you know that. Um, they, uh, my stereotype of British people is stiff upper lip and class and propriety and whatever. And they were just taking off their clothes and <laughs> peeing. I mean, it was just, it was nuts. It was really, really crazy. So I like how this same project can sort of, you know, key you into what, um, you know, how cultures, you know, behave. So some people were not interested at all in the portraits. just um, starting their little narratives. This is people that don't know each other. <laughs> or we had, um, we had her, she, she abused her boyfriend seriously for about three hours. <laughs> and, um, And I'm showing you just like, I don't know, like three minutes of footage, but I have hours and hours and hours. It's really incredible when you give people the agency to, to, um, to create, they really come through. If, like in, like in Hochstrat and Violet. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, shadow plays are awesome because they're, there's no instructions. Um, another thing that's kind of neat about shadow plays or this kind of thing is that interactivity for groups is really difficult, right? But you have like a democratic uh, kind of voting system, then that doesn't really work because that's frustrating as democracy, right? 
because most of the time the majority wins unless you're in the US. Um, and uh, it, the idea is that the eccentric stuff cannot come out of, out of voting. And the eccentric stuff is really what's worth it. The other way to do it is taking turns, right? Like in Victorial, everybody had 10 seconds, and then you get this, this sense of everybody else is passive. With the shadow play, it's interesting, because you're there and you're an individual, you're doing your own thing, but you're also creating a, a tableau, like something that's more collective, more connected, and so it's, it's, um, it's a really good device. And we've done this in many, many, many cities. Um, this is in Linz, Austria, right onto the city hall in the Hauptplatz. We stopped car traffic, which already gives people a sense of belonging and a sense of takeover. Um, I don't know, in Linz we saw people brought their pets. There was this tiny little chihuahua that was 70 foot high and everyone was under the chihuahua, that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. In 2005, um, I made a project called Subtitle Public. It's an empty room. There's nothing to see. But when you go in, a surveillance system detects you and it puts a verb in third person um, projectile to your body. And no matter where you walk, um, the, the verb follows you. The only way to get rid of a verb is to touch somebody else, in which case uh, you exchange words with him or her. Mm -hmm. So as a funny story, in the opening in Mexico City, we had an important Mexican politician, and he got the word masturbates. Um, <laughs> and because uh, it's all the verbs conjugated in third person. So he was very mortified. And then I showed him how he could wipe masturbates onto somebody else, and then he got coordinates. And then he was like, yeah, I'm not touching anyone else. I like that. <laughs> so he walked around with that. <coughs> um, so let me just fast forward to show you what happens. So like the guy up on the top has got the word institutionalized as the one on the bottom has the word marries. And then when you touch, institutionalizes, migrates, and then he gets a new word, winks. And pretty much all of my works have this moment, we call it, pretentiously, we call it the Brechtian moment. The moment where, for a few minutes, <coughs> we interrupt the simulation and we show the mechanism of surveillance. So in this case, you can see how you're being tracked and so on. So it's very similar to Zoom Pavilion. Um, again, tracking and again, um, shadow place, but this time at a different scale. These are no longer photographic portraits, but actual interactive portraits. So thousands of volunteers from the city where the project is shown um, are recorded. And what we do is you have people walk by and you find within your shadow a portrait, but then the portrait finds you. So for example, this fellow over here has found somebody sleeping in his shadow, and then as you stand there, they establish eye contact. And for as long as you're on top of one of these virtual portraits, the virtual portrait stays there, sort of um, uh, looking at you, kind of like suspended <coughs> animation. It's not a loop, but it, we call it scrubbing the playhead. So it kind of slows down and it just keeps the eye contact. And crucially, when you're not interested anymore, you walk away. And, um, and when you do, then the portrait loses interest in you. So as he walks away, she goes back to sleep, disappears. And then it, it's literally impossible for her to appear in the same location. So it's a, it's a very big area. It's 20,000 square f feet of plaza. The last time we did this project was in Trafalgar Square. And uh, it's quite intimate because you have that relationship of one-to-one. -one. <coughs> Technically or technologically, <coughs> we have the world's brightest projector. I always say that my work is as big as my insecurity, so I am always using the biggest thing. But I've been in psychotherapy for 10 years, so now I'm doing little things too. <laughs> so it's the world's biggest projector, casts your shadow, and then inside of your shadow <coughs> you have these robotic projectors, which are the ones that allow us to put the portraits right inside of your shadow. So in terms of rotation and transformation and scaling, that's all done by the computer. And the tracking system is a surveillance system that not only detects where you are, it detects where you're going to be in the future. So you see those crosshairs? That's kind of the computer assuming that that's where you're going to be based on how you're moving. And so what we do with that information is we make sure that the portraits don't come to you. We put a portrait somewhere in your path and you discover it. 
Now, most people don't really care about that. Um, they just sort of find somebody inside of your shadow, and that's fine. In terms of the content, the, the project uses um, local filmmakers to um, record the, the volunteers. And so the volunteers were free to do whatever they wanted. The only thing we asked the volunteers is at one point, look straight at the camera. And that's the moment that we trigger when you uncover a portrait. So most people just did sign language or, or saluted or whatever. They also, some people took their clothes off. It's England after all. Um, <laughs> but um, there's everything from political messages to, you know, all sorts of stuff. And in terms of the content, the content is, is not controlled by me. It's really what they want. So then that's this piece. In 2006, I made a project called Pulse Room. It's a sensor not unlike what you might find at a gym. You hold on to it, it measures your heartbeat, and it converts it into flashing in a light bulb. And then it sends it, records it, and it sends it to the very first light bulb in a room. Then here comes a second participant, who is the mother of the sponsor of the project. And this is in Puebla, Mexico. So notice how her heartbeat is different in heart rate, but also the attack on the tungsten filament.